What are the three axes of movement? Hello, my name is Hayley. I'm, I'm here from Parallel Coaching. Um, today, I'm just going to literally go through the three axes of movement real, real quickly, see if I can uh, get you to kind of understand the ins and outs of it. Most people get confused by this, mostly because it's a new topic. And at level two, you don't really go into axes of movement, even though you go into joint actions. Now, if you understand joint actions, you will understand axes of movement. So joint actions are really the fundamentals in understanding axes of movement. So axes of movement are talking about how a joint moves in space and what does it move around. So for example, if you look at your bicep, for example, it only moves in one direction and that's moving around a, a point of axes. And that's like having a stick moving through it so that when you then rotate that stick, it's like skewering it. When you then rotate it, it moves. And that's what we um, kind of have to think about whenever we're talking about axes of movements. You're basically taking a joint, putting a stick all the way through it, and then rotating that stick either side to make the movement happen. So that's what axes of movement really is. It's the axes that the movement occurs around. So let's kind of get a little bit of perspective on that. The three different axes of movement that we have, first one is longitudinal axis. Now this longitudinal axis, think about the length of the joint. So for this one, imagine a ballerina in a jewelry box or a figure skater doing a pirouette. And this, a good example of this is literally they've got a stick or a skewer the whole way down through their spine and then you're twisting them which makes it move in the transverse plane. So you need to also be aware of your planes of motion in order to do this as well and we've got another videos on that available here on YouTube so please do take a look. But the axis goes the whole length of the joint so as you're looking at somebody uh, at that somebody standing in a neutral position, it will be going down the length of the joint. The vertebra is a really good example of that. But you can also have that in relation to if you put it through the shoulder, for example, um, vertically down, so longitudinal through the length of the joint, then it would cause you to do like a pec fly type motion with your shoulder. So I'm sat here um, moving my arms around. Um, other things that it would do is sort of a mobility exercise. So if you've ever started off doing some, some spinal twists at the beginning of a session when you're mobilizing your spine, basically put your hands on top of your head and spin backwards and forwards based around just the, the vertebra twisting. That rotation is all longitudinal axis and it's mostly a rotational ac action. So whenever rotation kind of happens, that and horizontal um, flexion extension of the shoulder like a pec fly. Okay, so next one down is horizontal axis. Now, a horizontal axis, for this one, you want to imagine things that are happening in a sagittal plane, like a forward roll. Now, the reason why this is horizontal is that if you imagine instead of the skewer going lengthways, it's going to go across the horizon. So you're looking at somebody neutrally uh, that's standing in a neutral position, and you stick a skewer through their hips. Um, but across the horizon, so across the horizon, horizontally across their hips, and you then twist that skewer, it's either going to cause their, uh, their back from their hips upwards to lean forwards, or it's going to lift their legs, so they're getting hip flexion extension, basically. That's moving it. So flexion extension are the main things that happen here, and that's because they're all sagittal plane movements. So Hip flexion extension is a good one. Anything walking, squatting, um, a crunch obviously is as well. Uh, so horizontal, think that the axis goes across the horizon. And then final one is anterior posterior axis. Now for this one, remember that um, an anterior, so anterior think antennae, that's forwards, so always at the front. Posterior is in the past, that's behind. So this suggests that an anterior posterior axis, you're going to have a skewer going through you front to back. So let's do that same sort of thought, but in relation to the shoulder. So if you put it through the front of the shoulder to come back out of the back of the shoulder and then rotate that, it's going to cause you to either lift your arm in a lateral raise kind of position or pull it down in a lat pull down. So that you get shoulder adduction. Same thing happens in the hip. If you stab through the hip front to back and then rotate that skewer, you're going to get hip abduction, which is um, sort of lifting the leg up to the side, doing a, the starting part of a lateral lunge, that side of things. 
So three axes of movement to remember. First of all, longitudinal axis. Remember, it goes down through the length of the joint. Horizontal goes across the horizon of the joint. And then anterior posterior is front to back. Now, as soon as you remember and sort of get it in your head that that's the way that those skewers are being put through the joint, then you've just got to physically imagine moving that skewer and finding out what happens to the joint. And actually, it's a really good way of doing it. Remember, you take your body into the exam with you. So it's a, it's a good way of, um, sort of remembering it. Now, let's quiz you. Let's see if you remembered that okay. So during a bicep curl, the elbow moves along which axis of movement? So think about the elbow, think about how it moves. Where would the skewer need to be in order to allow that movement to happen? So is it an anterior posterior? Is it frontal? Is it horizontal or is it longitudinal? So just jot down your or give your answer now. Shout it out and nice and loud. That would be awesome. Um, and I'll give you the answer in three, two, one, the answer is horizontal. So if you look at somebody in a neutral position and you stick a, a, a skewer through the, the horizon, so level with the horizon but through their elbow, and then turn that skewer, it will allow for flexion extension. Another way of remembering that is that horizontal works in the sagittal plane and a bicep curl is in the sagittal plane because it's flexion extension of the elbow. So they, there's numerous ways of remembering them. Generally, I think the skewer works really well. Most people can, uh, can relate to it and can remember it off the back of their exam. If you have any more questions about your revision, then please do drop them below in the comments box because I love hearing about what you might be struggling on so I can do some more videos. Um, but also, I do some regular YouTube lives and webinars now. So if you have any, if you hit subscribe to our YouTube channel, then as soon as they go live, you'll be able to join me live for those, which is a really great way of learning. Um, literally, you can be listening to us whilst you're on your phone out and about and then interact, have comments and questions backwards and forwards. So if you're interested in doing that, hit subscribe and you'll get a notification on the next one that we do. Um, outside of that, I hope that you got lots of benefit from this quick video. Um, like I say, pop a little comment below and uh, it'll be good to hear from you. Have a really great day and good luck with your exam. Take care. Bye.